G'day guys, I hope you enjoyed that intro video and welcome back to the channel. Today we are talking about the Secret Lab Titan Chair. Again, this is my updated review, part two if you want to say it, which is actually now nine months since I've owned this chair and I'm putting this video together to talk to you a little bit more in depth about how this chair has actually gone over the last nine months. And as a bit of a spoiler, if you just watched that intro video, that is this exact chair I am sitting on right here and as you can see, it's still looking pretty good nine months in. Now, it's been a bit of a funny nine months, hasn't it? Now, down here in Australia in particular, we've been under what at least our media is calling one of the world's strictest COVID lockdowns. And effectively, for the better part of six, nine months, we haven't really been able to leave the home at all, with the exception of a few basic rules like going out for groceries and an hour for exercise and things like that. But for me, what that's actually meant is me and the Secret Lab Titan chair have gotten very, very close. In fact, I actually think I'm spending more time in this chair than I am my bed, and that is absolutely crazy. As I mentioned in my original video, I think I'm probably doing around 10, 12 hours a day in this chair, and that includes working full time, bit of personal use, and life admin tasks that I would generally do at this desk. And overall, that actually means I think I've done more than 2,500 hours in this chair so far. And for me, really, if we weren't in COVID, I actually think that would put me more to the two to three to four year mark based on pre-COVID usage. And to see the chair in its current state, as you saw just before, it's bloody good. There is barely a mark on it and it looks almost brand new. Now, not everything is perfect with the Secret Lab chair and I'll talk to you about that a bit later, but overall, I'm really happy with the experience so far. Now, if you have liked what you've seen, make sure you like and subscribe to the channel too. It is greatly appreciated and jump into the written description. Check out that for a little bit more information and a link to the product. And if you have any questions, drop a comment below and I'll do my best to answer them for you as well. So nine months with the Secret Lab Titan, and I do have to say it turned out to be a bit of a blessing that my original office chair broke on me right when it did because I got this just at the very beginning of our COVID lockdown and it has been the saving grace that's gotten me through all this time working from home and being at my desk this long because still, Nine months in, I am able to go 10 hours plus a day in this chair with minimal back pain and discomfort. And to be honest, I've never had a chair that's let me go that long without any issues whatsoever. Now, as I said, and as you probably read if you're doing your research right now, this chair is a very different chair to probably what you're sitting on right now. So while my experience has been overwhelmingly positive with the Secret Lab Titan, obviously there are some negative things that I'll jump into as well. And just to kind of summarize that, because most of them are minor, they kind of start with like the paranoia that you have with the fabric material like this one, because the reality of staining it is quite serious and you need to always be thinking about it. And when you do forget, you do have a mild freak out. But otherwise, of course, there are a few build quality issues which I'll talk about down the line as well. And also I'll jump back and talk about these armrests because they still are the loudest part of the entire chair. But that said, let's jump in to do a bit of a health check of the Secret Lab Titan chair now too. So I'll grab and pull out my toolkit and jump in and check to see if all the bolts are nice and tight. Tight, tight, there's no screw in there intentionally, and one, two, three turns, that's back to being tight, 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 tight. There we go. Tight. Slight movement. Tight. 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 Ooh, one half a turn there. Tight. 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 
So there you go guys, as I said in the original video, it is great that you can easily access all these screws and things to check the health of your chair. And to be honest, in the heat of all this COVID working from home stuff, I did totally forget to kind of jump in and do that until I started producing this video. So this is the real first time I've really gone over the chair with the screwdriver to make sure everything's tight. And really, I'm kind of surprised that the handle for the recliner is the one thing that was loose because it's actually the least used feature on the chair. Now down here in Australia too, as I mentioned, we've been in one of the harshest lockdowns in the world, particularly in the state that I am in. And really we haven't been able to leave the home at all. In fact, if you can't tell, I haven't even been able to get a haircut. So obviously a big part of this video is to talk about how the software material is held up. And for me, the material is going amazingly. In fact, I am so surprised that I have not stained it significantly yet because there have been a few incidents. Now what you can see here is I've actually brought my Secret Lab Titan chair all the way to the photography studio that I do work at just to show you what the condition of this chair is in probably one of the most even lighting environments that you can have. By placing the chair in this environment, I would hope you can see almost any imperfection that would be on this chair. And as you can see, there are barely any, if any. So the fabric material itself doesn't even seem to be starting to fray, especially on the seat base. It's all still perfectly smooth. Just going over the chair too, there are no loose threads or anything coming undone. The whole chair is perfectly smooth. So overall, I can't recommend the fabric material enough and let's not even talk about how breathable this chair is as well compared to sitting on a leather variant as well. This chair does keep you much, much cooler, especially in the warmer months. So the elephant in the room is especially the softweed material and how it goes with stains, especially in the color combination, the cookies and cream that this model is. And I have to say, over my nine months of experience with this chair, there's been many holy crap moments where I thought I might have actually stained this chair and I actually did not. And those include dropping crumbs and, and, and bits of food and things like that. You know, when you're eating toast or something at your desk, because while working here all day, obviously I do eat a lot of food at my desk now. But of course also it's when you've gone out for like a walk with your dog and the dog's jumped up on the back of you or something and might have left a bit of mud or you've gone for a bicycle ride and there's a little bit of mud that's flicked up onto your shirt or something like that. Those moments where you remember while you're doing the activity to change before you sit down on your chair and then time moves on and you completely forget and then you have that moment where you go, crap, I need to check to see if I've stained the chair. And thankfully, every time this has happened so far, I haven't stained the chair, except once. And this is what I'll refer to as the incident. Now, there was this one time while owning this chair where I did stain it really, really badly. And it was after a night where I cooked a roast pork dinner and a couple of hours after obviously cooking the meal, eating the meal, cleaning up afterwards, I had just come from my office right here and gone into my lounge room to watch a movie or something with my partner and discovered on my arm there was a little bit of oily residue from baking stuck on my arm and it was bad, that red brown sludge that you get when you cook a roast and I suddenly dropped everything, jumped off my couch, ran in here to immediately check to see if the chair was okay and it wasn't. Now, the stain happened just around here, so obviously I've just kind of put my arm up against it as I was sitting into it, and I left a nice, dirty brown mark on it. Now, at the time, I was freaking out, and I didn't get a chance to take a photograph of it. I wasn't even thinking about a part two video at this time. But what I did do is I actually took a photo of the towel that I started wiping it off on. So you can see what this stain did to a normal hand towel. Just imagine what it did to a nice white gray chair. Now I didn't have the Secret Lab Titan cleaning products yet, but I am a car enthusiast and I work in the automotive industry. So I quickly ran out to my garage and got some car cleaning products for interiors and quickly applied them to the chair. Now what I used here was a Bowden's product called Fabricadabra. It's an Australian brand, but is a very similar quality to like Mother's or Meguiar's. But I wanna challenge you right now because let me just zoom in onto this spot. Can you see the stain there anymore? Try and find it because I show everyone this spot and no one can tell me where the stain is. It seems like I am just so paranoid about that stain that I'm the only one that can see where it is now. And that's a really good thing, right? So 
I am genuinely surprised that I was able to get this stain out because it was seriously bad. So I thought I'd start with the good things about this chair and I thought I'd jump in and talk about some of the features that I actually did not spend much time on or any on in the original video. And the first one I wanted to talk about was the reclining function of this chair. Now, when I produced the original video of my Secret Lab Titan chair, I actually did not mention the reclining function at all. And the main reason for that was that I just had no expectation that I was gonna actually use that feature. For me, having this chair was so I could sit at my desk and work. It wasn't about relaxing and being in a reclining position. But what's actually changed, especially during COVID, is at least in my household, the demand for the lounge room and the television has skyrocketed. And rather than continually fighting with other people in this household for the main TV, whether that's for Netflix, games or whatever, I thought I'd invest in building a little bit of a man cave to get me through this COVID period. And thankfully I had access to some old secondhand things like an old Xbox and a really old LCD TV. And I've actually built a little bit of man cave right over here just behind the camera. And what that's actually meant is during the times when I feel like relaxing, putting my feet up, I don't have to fight with my friends and family over when I can access the TV. So what I've actually done is I bought myself like a footrest cushion down here and I've found it a great companion for the Secret Lab Titan chair when I'm reclining. So at the end of my work day or on a weekend, I'll actually lower the chair as low as it can go. I'll recline the back and put my feet up here and be able to basically be in a nice, comfortable, horizontal position while I'm playing some of my more favorite classic games because most of the consoles and things that I have here are actually more older generation stuff. So while you are reclined, obviously you're on an office chair, you don't really get the ability to kind of flick around and change positions as much as you might want, but I can go many hours in the recliner position and still be comfortable, which is really a good thing. Now with the reclining option here too, there's something I really wanted to talk about. And this is a bit of a test I wouldn't mind you trying if you're sitting on a chair that's not a secret lab at home, obviously thinking about buying one, is do yourself a favor and lean back as far as you can go on your chair. Are you in balance? Are you comfortable leaning back as far as you can go? Or do you actually feel like the chair is gonna tip over? Because in the Titan, it feels like you're basically in perfect balance. There is no sensation of vertigo or any kind of feeling that suggests like you're about to fall over. Now, I wanna take that a little bit further too. Now, in this chair, while reclining as far back as possible, I can use my feet and throw myself as hard as I can, left or right, so I'm spinning without feeling like I am going to fall over. Now, I have never sat in an office chair that has been able to do that. Generally speaking, if you did that, you would certainly be at the risk of falling over or something like that. And as I said, I really do think that kind of brings it back down to how sturdy the Secret Lab Titan is. It is seriously heavier and stronger than the previous office chairs that I've had, which you can learn about in my previous video. I wanted to elaborate a little bit more on how pet hair interacts with this chair and overall the experience has been amazing. Pet hair does not stick to this chair, at least for my dog. Now, my dog is a Border Collie cross Samoyed. Now, a Samoyed is one of the fluffiest dogs on the planet and without a doubt, as our dog's approaching summer right now, the molting is getting serious. We brush and we brush and we brush and more and more hair comes out. Now, I just wanted to quickly show you our Jeep Wrangler because we obviously cart our dog everywhere and by putting her in the back of our car, she just sits there in the back. We have a nice protected cover, but you can still see how much hair gets on the other seats in the car. Now think about that for this chair. This chair seems to just be able to wipe away all the dog hair that comes from her. It is absolutely amazing. I really did not expect that this chair would do so well against pet hair. Now I also know too that depending on the dog and the hair type, this could be a completely different situation for you. But for me, it has been really, really good. So in my original video, I mentioned that this armrest had some mild damage to it that arrived out of the box. And I hadn't actually gotten in touch with Secret Lab at the time that I produced the video, but I have now. And the process was really amazingly good for a warranty claim. So I got in touch with Secret Lab via their warranty claim email and I just sent a really basic email, attached a few photographs of the problem and I had a new armrest at my door five business days later after I sent that email. It was one of the simplest 
and cleanest warranty experiences that I've personally had myself. Now the icing on top of this too was the fact that Secret Lab didn't ask for the original armrest back, they just let me keep the old one. And considering the damage that I had on my old one was minor, I would call this quite a win. So now I actually have a spare part for this chair should I want to. And obviously, at least based on my experience, I would expect Secret Lab to do a really, really good job with their warranty claims as well. So if you do get a chair that is slightly out of whack, at least based on the experience I've had, I believe you will get looked after quite nicely. Now I'll quickly talk about the headrest pillow as well, because I have actually done like the nine months every day on this chair with my head up against this, and it still looks actually brand new. Now I haven't cleaned this or gone out of my way to make it look this good. This is actually still the condition of what it's been from nine months of solid use. And it's still super comfortable, it's just as springy. The rubber material on the back is in exactly the same condition as it was when I first bought it. And overall, it's really, really good. In fact, in my original video, I spoke about the need of pulling this pillow down just a little bit every few days because I thought it was sitting a little bit high. But now, over the last nine months, the elastic material has relaxed a bit, I guess, and now I don't actually have that problem anymore. Now, the straps on the pillow too are adjustable, so you can adjust how much tension you want on that pillow on the back of the chair. But for me, I actually have it so it does sit quite low. That does mean it's a little bit looser than maybe what you would probably have but I no longer keep needing to pull it down. Now in my original video, I actually mentioned that I had experienced no electric shocks while sitting on this fabric material. And when I had done my research, I did uncover that some people explained that they were getting some mild shocks while touching metal parts of this chair while sitting in the fabric material. So after the last nine months, I guess there have been more times where I have worn synthetic clothing and especially jackets and things like that. They do sometimes have the habit of giving you a mild electric shock particularly if you touch the metal armrests here. I don't know what else I can say on that, but the fact that I was wrong originally, if you are in a colder environment and you wear a lot of synthetic materials, then consider how you feel about those mild electric shocks that you might occasionally get. To be honest, it's exactly the same kind of shock that you might get on your car seat or on your couch or anywhere else in the home. It's not a big deal, but I thought I would mention it, especially for the fact that I did actually say the opposite in the original video too. There's one thing I have learned since owning the Secret Lab Titan 2 is Secret Lab actually have an online store for you to purchase all these parts and accessories for the chair. So if you want a new armrest, you can buy a new armrest, or if you want a backrest or new wheels or so on and so forth. Each individual part of the chair is seemingly a piece that you can buy if you need to replace it. Now, obviously there is a long warranty here and I would certainly encourage you to go down the warranty path first if you do need to replace something, but it really is nice to know that there is a spare part store there because for any other retail office chair that I've had, it's basically like once a part goes, you throw the whole chair in the bin. The great thing about the Secret Lab 2 is obviously the ergonomics and adjustability that you get with the chair as well. So especially now owning it nine months and spending so long on this chair, I really have come to appreciate many things about what you can do and adjust on this chair. So to start with, the armrests are obviously great that you can move up and down and back and forward, but generally speaking, I now have them at an ergonomic level which is flat with the top of my desk and that really does provide the maximum comfort for my arms. But with the rest of my back and everything like that, I really, really am enjoying the lumbar support that is included in this chair. Just being able to quickly tighten and adjust that pressure on your back does go a long way in providing you some extra support throughout the day. And of course, while the reclining function is great to completely almost lie down, just being able to do micro adjustments of your position can go a long way in keeping you going for an extra few hours. Now, nine months in and so many hours into ownership, the chair is still dead quiet for me. When I rock back and forward, there is basically not a noise to be heard. Have a listen. Now here's the same clip again with max volume. So the longer you have this chair, the more you start to pick up some of the issues with build quality. And while none of them are major, I thought I would mention them anyway. So first of all, these two armrests, they do sit in a slightly different position on either side. So this one here does stick out a little bit further from the backrest, whereas this armrest here, does stick in a little bit further. And on the base of the chair, there is a gap where you can see through the chair. And on one side of my chair, the gap is higher than the other side. 
But as you can see, the chair looks perfectly straight. So I would imagine that's a design decision rather than anything else. In terms of the base of the chair and I guess the foam all over the chair, nothing is given way. The foam is holding exactly the same position that it was originally too. I've seen a few reviews that have kind of spoken about how the base of the chair has started to kind of mold to a different position or isn't holding its original position. For me, as you can see here, I have not had that problem at all. It is exactly the same and just as rigid as it once was. And I, I do say this also just reminding you that I have spent every day of the last nine months for most of the day in this chair. Now in terms of like what Secret Lab does after you purchase this chair, I have gone through the whole journey now and I can definitely say that like my original YouTube video qualified me for that five year extension of the warranty. Now that too, I have referred on to people with that $25 voucher that you can provide to two friends or family so they can get a slightly discounted chair. And the return for that is that you get a free cleaning pack with it. And here it is here. So this is the Secret Lab cleaning product. It comes in a pretty snazzy box. Now in the box, you get some premium fabric cleaner, they call it, and you get a branded microfiber cloth. Now the steps on this cleaning product are essentially just spray on the chair, wait a little bit, wipe it off and let the chair dry. It's as simple as that. Now the one disappointing thing with the cleaning product is when you do qualify for that free product, it is free. It comes up on your account when you put it through, zero dollars, all excited. But when you actually do go to pay, you do have to pay postage and that is a bit of a kicker. So working from home has obviously been a tricky thing, but being in front of the camera on Zoom meetings is a very common thing for me at the moment. And what that's actually meant is a lot of people that I work with and friends and family have noticed that I now own a Secret Lab Titan chair. And that's obviously started a lot of conversations about the product. And through that, I've actually referred probably like five or six people on to buy a Secret Lab Titan chair. And those are like gamers, IT developers, and also people that are in the automotive side of the industry as well. And effectively, I've got the same feedback from all of them after they kind of got a taste of what the chair was like. And that's no matter what research and videos that they watch, they are not ready for the sensation on what this chair is when they first sit on it. You can't get around the fact that it does feel hard when you first sit on it, but I think all of them have said that they do really appreciate that extra support after they have adjusted over a couple of weeks with the chair. Now in my original video, I started to talk about the height recommendations for the Secret Lab range. And what I actually had learned is just when I published this video, I didn't actually think about it at the time, that Secret Lab had just launched a revised version of their website where they dropped off the smallest size chair from their portfolio. The Omega model is actually the smallest and cheaper Secret Lab chair that you can buy with the Titan XL being the most expensive. So now there's only three models in their core range. These chairs are more about the fit in my opinion. Now, if you are significantly tall or you do weigh a lot more or something, probably there is a lot more to think about with that decision. But if you're the average person, five, six foot or whatever, I really do think, especially between the Omega and the Titan chair, probably what it comes down to is actually choosing the fit that you want. The Omega chair has the side bolstering and all of those extra things that make you feel a lot more snug. Whereas the Titan chair, you've got the flat base, a little bit more room to spread out. And without a doubt, I'm very happy that with the decision I made to go with the Titan chair because I have absolutely loved being able to spread out on the chair more than I've ever been able to do with the previous gaming car chairs that I've had. Now, when I published my original Secret Lab Titan chair, I really was not expecting the positive reception that it had. So thanks a lot to everyone that's watched that video and liked it. I really did appreciate the kind feedback that most of you left. So one of the common trends that I noticed in the comments section of my original video was a lot of people started to talk about the Herman Miller range of chairs. And to be honest, obviously in my research period too, I did deep dive and learn a little bit about the Herman Miller range. and. Look, to be honest, I think if you're looking at the Secret Lab Titan chair, which is at a medium, middle price point and comparing it to the Herman Miller, which seems to be a significantly higher price point, it is three times the price. And pricing aside, the Herman Miller turned me off for a few other reasons as well. And one of those was just simply, it looks like a corporate office chair, one that belongs in a boardroom or something like that. And without a doubt, I don't wanna have that chair reminding me of work when I'm at my home. On top of that too, 
it's just the styling that is a bit of a letdown. Now, as I mentioned, I'm a car enthusiast, I work in the auto industry, and I want a chair that's a bit exciting when I sit in it and enter the room, and I don't find the Herman Miller really gives off that vibe if that's what you want. On top of that too, a lot of the Herman Miller chairs don't have a headrest, and for me, especially thinking about the recliner mode and everything like that, I bloody want a headrest on my chair. So, yeah, that's all I'll say on that. I really do think that the Herman Millers are probably an amazing chair, uh, but of course they would be at three times the price. I don't really know what else there is to say about that. And I guess that's a good segue to talk about how Secret Lab have recently raised their prices on all their chairs. And I guess that's probably because of COVID-19 and the demand that working from home has brought to increase the pricing of all their range. But I guess if you've been watching these chairs for quite a while, that might be a bit of a hard pill to swallow. But at this price point, which is probably a significant step up from the chair that you're sitting on right now, it is, in my opinion, well and truly worth it. Now, if you want to know more about the chair too, jump into the written description because I have included extra information there that's not in the video. And of course, there is the link there to this specific product as well. So go ahead and check all that out. And if you did like this video, please think about liking and subscribing to the channel as well. It is greatly appreciated. And until then, we'll see you around for the next video. Have a good one. See you later.